one of the signs of autumn is the dew on the grass in the morning. The moisture that ends up on the grass because of the moist air condensing in the low temperatures at night makes the grass wet. The low air temperature at night doesn't necessarily stop the grass from growing and the reason for that is because the soil temperature in the autumn is still warm. It's gathered up the heat in the summer and it's retaining it down there now like a storage heater. So the heat is rising in the soil, the grass is growing still. Grass commences growth at about 6 degrees Celsius and then the warmer it gets the faster it grows. So we still have a good bit of time where the grass is going to continue to grow. Grass will continue to grow all through the winter if the temperature is high but particularly in the autumn it will grow quicker um, from here till Christmas. It will grow quicker than it will from Christmas to March. Autumn is definitely here, you can smell it in the air and very soon some of the trees such as this liquid amber will start to show red and orange and yellow and purple on the leaves as the temperature gets lower and the sugar intensifies in the leaves and the chlorophyll begins to leave leave the leaves. Japanese maples tend to have really good autumn colour. This one is Osakasuki and it's just beginning to turn red and as the nighttime temperature gets, I think here it got down to about six, five, six degrees at night and if we get more nights like this, this will be beautiful tree full of red leaves in a couple of weeks from now. This is Sedum spectabilis and it's a great plant in September and you'll see butterflies on it in sunny weather gathering as much nectar as they can before they finish up for the year. And the dahlias are always a good plant for the autumn and they'll continuing, continue on until the first frost getting nicer and nicer in the autumn weather. This tree here is Acer palmatum and you can see the tops of the tree, the parts that are most exposed to the cold air are just starting to turn, just starting to turn red. Uh, this is the tree sits above the pond. Acer palmatum, it's the tree that they use as a graft for all of the cultivated varieties of Japanese maple. So they use it as a rootstock. The sun is lower in the autumn and the shadows are longer and it makes everything like these pine trees look prettier. The air is very clear on a day with no clouds. The atmosphere is clear and the sky is really intense blue.
and in another couple of weeks this tree which is Metasequoia Gliptostroboides the dawn redwood will be a beautiful colour yellow and as I say because the temperature is cold it will react quite quickly over the next couple of weeks the nighttime temperatures are going to cause the chlorophyll to go out of this tree it's one of three deciduous conifers in the world that I know of anyway <laughs> and it will lose its needles or its leaves uh, over the winter this one uh, the swamp cypress which is Taxodium distichum and larch which is Larix decidua all three of them lose their needles but before they do they have this most beautiful bright yellow colour so we'll watch this over the next couple of weeks and see how it goes we've been working on cleaning up the fruit garden uh, we built it a couple of years ago but we want to add to it now uh, maybe by putting a circular bed in the middle with the sundial and a focal point on the back wall there that's the original walled garden wall of Park House and the students here have been cutting the box hedge they've been doing some weeding and we're adding another layer of hogging dust to the pathways uh, to tidy up the lot we put in these posts a couple of years ago but we never did the wiring on the raspberries so we've done this in a certain way um, this is what I do with my raspberry at home, at home I've got two wires one either side of the post and you can bend the stems of the plants down from outside and tuck them into the branch or in, in between the, the wires and it works quite effectively for me I may have to remove this when we're doing it so you've got a bit more movement in the wires but it holds them in place and it means you don't have to individually tie the raspberries into place which is what a lot of the books suggest so um, this works quite well from a neatness point of view um, it's not that necessary with ra uh, autumn raspberries which some of these are um, because the autumn raspberries tend to hold themselves up but it definitely keeps them neater there are a few of the autumn raspberries that are growing out too far and we haven't removed them because in a few, re uh, few weeks time we'll be able to lift them and then move them back into the line if we lift them now they're probably not likely to survive as much as if we move them in a couple of weeks from now the espalier apples don't look very espalier at the moment we have started pruning them back into place but they haven't been pruned tight enough over the last few years um, and the tops are still needing to be done but we did pinch them back a little bit um, which is quite late for summer pruning we probably should have done that in July um, but of course we didn't have students in July um, and we didn't have any help so probably in the winter we're going to cut them back a lot harder and try and get them back into a kind of a branch framework and try and make this fruit garden um, really nice there is one more thing we're intending to do and that's to put a pergola or a system of hoops over the um, main pathway and uh, I've got an idea for that which we're going to build and then this concrete pathway is going to be over the next few weeks continued down along here uh, and that allows the compact tractor and the ride on lawnmower and the trailer to continue the full length of the edge of the wall garden and down to the compost bays which we've been doing a bit of tidying on um, we need to put new fronts on them and then we're going to continue a pathway beyond that and around a lot of things that were on the list for a while um, we're going to cover this old tarmacadam with the hog and dust and I think everything 
in the one surface and color will look a lot better. So that's what we're at at the moment. These are cordon apples and cordon apples are ones that grow along a wall on an angle and I think this was a French idea for getting more production in a smaller area. They're generally laid on an angle on a wall and they need a bit of work too but um, you can see this Golden Delicious is doing quite well and we've been starting to prune them, the apples and the pears. Some of them have been badly affected by woolly aphid. Uh, this one in particular. So what we've done here, or what Brian has done, is we're pruning them back quite hard um, to remove a lot of the damage, uh, the swollen buds from the woolly aphid. There's one there, and a bit of a canker as well. Um, and we are going to try and rejuvenate these plants um, and get some new growth in them and then keep an eye on the woolly aphid uh, from there in. This one's really badly affected and we're going to probably do the same with this, cut it back really hard. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll rip it out and put a new one in. That's all we can do. We've got some new materials in. This is the 2x4s and the 2x2 timbers. Uh, the 2x2s are for pegs to hold down some timber edges that we're going to be putting in, which will be done with 2x4, these ones. And we've got 10 tons of hogging dust. This stuff here um, is from a grit down to a, a dust and fine particles um, and it's full of lime so uh, when you put this down on the ground it beds down and it goes hard a hard surface you could push a wheelchair or a bicycle over and it's really good economical and nice surface to walk on uh, we put it down because obviously the tarmacadam is under um, meat and it's kind of looking raggy and I don't particularly want to do any more tarmacadam as well as the fact that we probably would have to budget for that. This way we can do it ourselves, we can do it now and if we put this down on the surface it will uh, look a lot nicer, you can see the colour is quite nice. The material is a byproduct of the decorative gravel process. Uh, this one comes from a, a quarry in County Wicklow um, and it's a really popular uh, stone uh, within Ireland and this is the byproduct of grading the stone that's generally put underneath the stone uh, for the stone to bed into the decorative gravel um, but I really like this stuff yes you can get weeds growing up in it but at the same time uh, it actually is quite sterile when it comes out of the ground so the weeds don't tend to come in it that quickly. Hey lads. And we've been busy as you can see. This is full of uh, some of the green waste that we won't be putting on the compost base because they're fairly full. Uh, this is from a big cleanup. There's also some branches that we're not putting through the chipper. We've kept a lot of branches to put through the wood chipper, but not the smaller, leafier ones. They tend to just be harder work than they're worth. Uh, underneath there's a bit of rubble and some other bits and pieces that we wanted to get rid of. But this is a 20 cubic meter uh, skip, and we normally get these once every couple of years and just do a right good cleanup which is what we're at at the moment. And it's nice, it's a nice feeling to get rid of a lot of bits and pieces of material and just uh, put them in a skip. And this will be recycled and separated. It's not gonna be just dumped into landfill, which is nice. So we are going to stake this apple tree. As you can see, it's been rocking in the ground. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways to stake a tree. One is to put the stake in alongside the tree 
and the other is to put it if you're pulling me over here with this. Uh, okay. Put it on an angle like this. The angled one has two advantages of that. The stake is leaning into the wind and the prevailing wind is coming this way so it's rocking and pulling it and holding it from going to you know holding it from going off vertical so that's a good strong way the second advantage is the stake is outside the rootstock so when you put the stake in you're not going to damage the rootstock I'm not as big a fan of this one as I am of having a stake in alongside it most fruit trees have to be staked for most of their life certainly for a lot of their early life but they don't develop roots as quickly as other trees most other trees two years maximum with a stake on it then you need to take the stake off so with this one this is what i'm going to do okay so the same thing is with this i want to not damage the roots okay so if I'm going to put this in here, I'm going to probably put it around here because the wind is blowing this way. Okay. Prevailing wind is generally from the west. This is kind of southwest here. This is a good way because of the walls. So the crowbar is a great way of driving a pilot hole. That means that you get the stake down straight. But also what it does is it makes uh, a hole that pushes the roots out of the way. So we're not bashing down the roots and breaking them on the way down. So if I do it this way, okay, and I do it, I can feel now that I haven't damaged the roots, but I want it as close to the tree stem as possible. So if I drive this down and I round it like this, what I'm doing with this is I'm pasting the soil on the sides of the hole so as it doesn't kind of crumble and fall back in. Okay, so I've got a nice straight hole here for this. Now when I put this stake in, you don't want the stake to be very high. I'm not supporting the top of the tree, I'm supporting the rootstock. I'm holding the rootstock from being blown and rocked in the wind. If this tree keeps getting rocked and the rootstock keeps moving, then it will never establish. The roots have to anchor themselves into the ground. And they can't do that if the tree is constantly moving and rocking the rootstock. So I only want it up at about as far as here to hold it in place. If the tree is not straight and it's leaning over, as in the stem is bending like that, then what you need is a bamboo, not a stake. The councils put taller stakes on trees for good reason. It's not because the tree needs a tall stake, it's because that protects the tree if somebody tries to vandalise it. So the taller the stake is, the less likelihood there is of somebody leaning up to the high height and breaking it up. It also allows them to put a kind of a guard around it. That's the reason, but it's not the ideal thing for a tree. So I'm getting this into the ground here. I'm going to use the sledgehammer. The sledgehammer or the persuader, the person who tells this, this is the way you're going down, is the best way to use to put the stake in. If you don't use a strong enough hammer, what happens is the stake goes its own way and you can also break the top because you're hitting too hard. This is working under its own right. right. And I want this to be very solid in the ground. And I want it straight. So that's the first part of getting the stake in. Now I want the tree to hold on to the side of it. You can see that'll be nice and straight then. So, this is tree strapping. And these are better than the tree ties that you buy with a buckle on them. A tree strap has to be very, very sturdy, very solid. But it also has to be soft enough that it doesn't damage the stem. There are different ways of tying this tree strap on. The best way is obviously to use a protector between the, um, the stake and the tree. And this is rubber, so the stem of the tree, which is quite delicate, obviously it's got bark on it, is, needs to be protected from rubbing against this. So there's two things you need to know there. This needs to be at the top. If it's halfway down, it's useless because then the tree can rub off this part. And then that part of the stake from here up is useless to the tree. So if you put this strap down lower, you might have to cut this off. Ideally, you put it at the top. Okay. There are different ways. If you wanted to be really economical, you could just do 
this. Wrap it around like that. And the strap will hopefully hold it away from the trees. So you could do it like that, okay? <coughs> but it's not the best way. If you had hundreds of trees to plant and you needed to keep the cost down, that'd be okay. But the best way to do it is to use this. So I need to wrap it around here, through the collar and around the back of this. So how I do that is I hold the tree up against it and I'll add a little bit more. Okay. And I slide it through one side here, for the sake. I slide it around the stem and go back through like that. And I get it nice and tight. And I pull it around here. And you want to overlap like this. Okay? And it's a good idea also to wrap it back on itself like that. That stops from tearing and ripping. So now I'm holding the tree, let's adjust it up with this way. I'm holding the tree against this here and there's not much movement that's quite solid okay and you can use a nail or you can use a screw I have screws here and you pinch it into place one little screw in there so you need to have if you had three hands it'd be better because holding it in place, holding the tree in place, and holding the strap in place, and holding everything in place, it kind of is a bit of dexterity needed. So that tree is strapped up against there. It's high enough on the stake that this can't rub off the top of the stake, and it's holding it in place there. And it's not too high that it'll allow the, the top of the tree to rock. The top of the tree needs to rock around so as it develops strength. The more pulling and grabbing, the better. And then in a few years' time, with most trees, Fruit trees will take a little bit longer. You need to take the tree off the stake or take the stake away because um, the roots eventually have to develop their own support and being put to the test by the wind and rocked back and forward makes them grab into the soil and anchor themselves better. If you leave a stake on a tree too long, it will never develop its own strength. But you need a little bit of help at the start. This is like the nursery part of the, you know, the development side of the tree. 